Let's talk it through again. First, the uh, uh, oil ring. Oil ring. I've got the green and the red not overlapping and lined up with right. the piston ring. Then you overlap the piston pin. And you overlap that. Then one of the, the bottom retainer we had pointing over. Always put the bottom one on first, by the way, too. Okay. Overlapping. Which they're the same, you know. The top and bottom, bottom one are the same, but. These are. Let's put the bottom one on first. Right. Okay, and then. Because otherwise you're fighting too many things at one time. Then, then you twisted the other one around the other side. So we've got one, if this is at six o'clock, we've got one at eight o'clock and then one at about four o'clock. Right. And we see that says top on it and it's also got the bevel. The bevel's on the top or the bottom? Bevel's on the bottom because it's a wiper. And we're going to put that one so that it faces at about 9 o'clock. And then the last ring, it also says top. top, and it's got a little bevel on it. That on also the says inside of the ring, the inside of the piston, inside of the ring. And you put it at like 3 o'clock. Yep, and then we wiggle them all around to make sure they're moving. All right. Well, I do that as I put them on. And it's ready to go. Okay, lest you think that it's that easy, now you're going to see somebody that's never done it before try it. So here's the green and red that we're going to put in. My dad said it's good to have fingernails. I don't have hardly any. On the bottom, get the, get the point end in. That one you can just roll around. Uh oh, I got them overlapping, huh? Mm -hmm. That's why when you do it, you should do this one on this side so it overlaps it immediately. You know, it goes past the, the overlap of that oil ring itself. There you go. You got it straight down. But I got it. I don't have it at nine o'clock. Hold on. That's why I'm saying you do it so it overlaps it immediately. Oh, okay. So walk the. See, then it's okay. So walk the retainer across the part where it's. Especially loose. on the bottom one. Especially the bottom one over here, you know, like walk over it around here, this way. Walk it around. And then do this, this one and walk it around. Yeah. Always going over the right. well ring first. First. Okay. Now. So this one says top and it's got the, the bevel on it. Right. So um, this one we're going to put it. Just put it where it's convenient for you, then turn it around. Okay. In other words, start in the front where you're working. And those don't roll around very easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now roll it around. Wait, there you go. Okay. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. No. Okay. And then top again. First one. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, you put the lip seal in with the fat part of the seal towards the motor and then down just a hair in rotation. In other words, I don't like to let the ends butt against each other. I'd rather have it do it up in the cap just a little bit. This is from experience. Just, yeah. And you always have to make sure in the main cap, down where the lip seal goes, there's a pin that comes through to hold the lips, to hold the rope seal where it belongs. So it won't rotate. You have to take it out. Otherwise it'll crush the lip seal and you got yourself an oil leak. Time to put the assembly lube on. Donated by Edelbrock. Any words of wisdom on this, Dad? No, smear it around with your finger, though. Just gonna slide it all over every bearing. So it's a big moment. It's time to put the crank in. My dad said that when I put the back in, be real careful about the uh, the seal that we just installed. So the crank is backwards. I'll stop and pick it up again. Now. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Hook your fingers in the back of the crank. How's that? No, no. In the in the hole in the back. You should be able to be enough room there to clear it. Set it down in there. There you go. There you have it. This is the this is the thrust bearing. You can see it's got bearing surface on both sides. It goes in just like the other ones. But you need to make sure that's in the right spot. And for each of these. There's a number and an arrow. So starting at the back, this one's six, this one says T for thrust, and then four, three, two, one. So we'll put those in there. So we're starting with the middle caps, and we set the torque wrench to 45 foot-pounds. We're gonna start and work the way out until they're all 45, then do 55, and then do 65 for all the caps. That's the way to do it. All right, what I've done now, i put uh, copious amounts copious amounts of oil all over the piston and rings and wrist pin and everything. Put the ring compressor on, set it down in the cylinder. Get my expanders out of the way. Tap the ring compressor down until it's level with the block. Smack away. You don't need to worry about it hitting the crank, that's why you got the levers on there. Done. Alright, so this is my first piston install. Um, I got number two. She's going to go right here. Uh, need to put the rubber hoses on it to make sure that it's, uh, it won't hurt the crank. Then I'm going to lube it up copiously. I got a bucket down here that is keeping uh, is keeping the oil from going everywhere. And then 
Let me put this in here. It has a top. It has a top and a bottom. So I'm going to put that in there. Squeeze it down like that. And the notch in the piston always goes towards the front. in there, notch towards the front. Make sure the compression tool, the ring compression tool is down low. Give a little pop. It only took me four times. So it's sliding real good. Notch towards the front. Take the hammer. Make sure it's all the pieces. Notch towards the front. Slide it down in there. And pliers it down. And then some authority. Back the pressure tool down so it's flush. number right there that's got to match up to the number on the other side on. the bolts 